Yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, really, I mean, if you don't, if, if there's so much that you have to experience, how in the world can you put a good plan together? And often mistakes will be made to have somebody else do it for you. That's the worst thing you can do. Almost no plan is better than a plan prepared by some so-called professional. Because you're spending all the time and energy putting together a plan of something you don't really necessarily know yet. So versus kind of going out there and, and start trying to make things happen. And we, we, we advocate, you know, being somebody who's going to project out revenues. Where are you going to get your sales? Where is it going to come from? What kind of support do you need? What kind of reporting do you need? You don't have to have all the answers. In fact, when you start your own business, you'll probably have 10 to 20 percent of your answers. The other 90, 80 percent is going to be coming from the real world. Right. So you walk in Monday morning, you're looking around, you're in an office, you're in your home. Or I don't know where you start your business. You have employees, you don't have employees. You have to direct this activity towards making a profit. And it's going to take you quite a while, even if you do have that knowledge through school. That's, we, we won't get into that subject tonight. But you, you can look in books and you can get formats and you can, but nothing nothing beats that engagement. Nothing beats that experience that you're going to get by going out and trying to get customers, trying to get employees to do things, try to get credit, try to get all those things that make a business. And each time you encounter somebody, each time you engage somebody, you're putting that experience in your bag of tricks. And the next time you find yourself digging into that bag and using it, and pretty soon that bag gets pretty full. And one day you meet business coaches like Adam and I, and then we really, really start going because everything starts to make sense to you after we coach you. So You mentioned a big bag full of stuff. I'm thinking of Santa Claus or something like that, walking around a big bag full of presents. <laughs> you know, one of the things that, uh, as you're talking about your story, with because uh, I, I had a note written down here that I wanted to talk about, but as you're sharing your story about the real estate part, that kind of touched on this note I have, I have the word support written down, Jack, support. And you mentioned yeah, he, he had a buddy of yours, right? And so he had somebody who was there with you. Kind of I love I love along. partners, Adam. I, I love partners, and I've had good experience with partners. Well, yeah, I think it's important to have some sort of a support structure and, and schedule, you know, whether it be a partner like that. Um, certainly, if, if if you're if you're married, uh, you know, to, to talk to your spouse about this, so you know, so, so he or she is on board, or at least is aware of what's kind of going on. You know, if they are supportive, they don't know necessarily what they're supporting, but they you know, they're going to support you and be aware. But have folks you can talk to about this stuff. Again, you know, that's that's always a key thing to have because otherwise you get caught up in your mind and and, and investigate stuff, reading stuff, watching videos, you know, researching on you know, online. You, you, your mind can explode and just kind of talking through stuff. It's amazing. You know, one of our seven keys to success that we coach our our owners on is presenting. And presenting often is again, it's it's a lot of uh, whiteboarding ideas or getting things out, or just trying to say, let, let me try to take this voluminous information I've been kind of studying, let me try to boil it down to its essence. And it's very difficult to do, but if you kind of talk through stuff, you're able to kind of write it down. But you have somebody you kind of bounce ideas it back. Starts to forth. become clear, yeah, right? And you start to hear yourself talk a little bit. At times you realize, hey, that's a great idea. Or, hey, that's the stupidest thing I could ever think. Of. Let me go this way instead. Or just talk to somebody where it might be very confusing for you. The person listening can say, "Hey, here, here's what I think you, that you need to do next," and they can they can just again, the the, the, the clouds can, can can part, the sun comes out, and say, "Hey, that's exactly what I what I have to do next," and we know that's the case because we do that day in and day out with our, our our clients who own companies. They're getting down in the weeds of stuff, and they'll come and talk to us about things, and we and we'll talk about something that's after listening to them for a little while and say, "Hey, here, did you try this?" And you can always see them sit back in their chair like, "Yeah, I didn't think of that." So, that you know? seems so simple and obvious. I mean, but. That might actually work. Okay, you know, I didn't think about that, right? Because you get so caught up in your thing. So having a support team or you know some sort of support uh, structure in place versus being out there on your own. Being on your own, it's hard to do anything on your own. Yes, it is. And to have success of any kind, it's you know if you look back in your life, if you had some successes, chances are you weren't doing it on your own. You've had some sort of support structure in place. It could be siblings or parents or friends or spouses or whatever it might be or your kids. You had some sort of partnership or something. You had, you know, you had people that were there for you where you've had success. It's not happening on its own. So try to identify that and find ways to go engage. You know, there, there are a lot of business groups that are out there. You know, there's a group here locally called the Gorilla Group, which is a meeting for 10 or 12 years. 
where they get together once a month and they share ideas about you know, stories of, uh, of entrepreneurs who, who have had successes and they, they, they network and mingle and talk about stuff. But again, just being in a group like that, it's amazing. The knowledge you get. The energy and the ideas, yeah, the things that That's are there. Right. And you aren't going to get it in a book because chances are somebody's writing a book, unless you're reading the right chapter at the right time, it's not going to hit versus talking to somebody live body in person. You got to you got to take that studying. You got to take that that knowledge and engage. You have to do it. You know, adding a, a little uh, additional info on that buying real estate. My my buddy and I, my partner and I, we were trying to buy real estate with no money down, spurred on by these books at the time, and uh, that complicated it even more so when you go out and talk about trying to put a deal together where you didn't really understand much, and try to get that property for no money down. But since then, all the learning we've done, we've been able to buy companies like that, buy businesses like that. And we often teach successfully our clients how to buy property, how to buy a business with no money down. They find it impossible because they don't, they don't understand what, it, what it's like. And I can recall that thought. Like, what are we doing here? We're reading this, but how can you get property with no money down? How can you do it? And Sounds too good to be true. There are ways to do it, very legitimate, and it happens every day. So it's not that big once you have the knowledge. Nothing's hard once you have the knowledge. Well, it can still be hard, but if you have the knowledge, things fall into place much easier. Yeah, so what you know, what makes you take that jump? And it's different for everybody. We each have our own stories. You know, for me, you know, you know I was 30 years old. My wife was seven months pregnant, and I say, we're going to start this company. Leaving a job. I mean, well, why are you leaving a job? I mean, you know, what's plan B? There's no plan B. It wasn't even really a plan A. <coughs> plan A was kind of start to engage and do stuff. And I knew Jack and I had, you know, had a lot of things in common. And we, and we didn't start a coaching company day one. It was doing other stuff. It, it evolved into a coaching company after engaging for a year with some different people and doing stuff where it became, hey, this was something that we discovered. Which is often right? how it works. Because you're, yeah. you're, you're engaged, you're doing stuff, you're, you're active, you're out there making things start to happen. And you're, and you're looking for stuff. And one of the things you start to realize is that, you know, if you put... And again, this is what I talked to, to, to Jason about a little bit, going back to the, the, the opening of the show here. He had a side business. I said, hey, picture if you took it just a day a week where you took off from your day job. You had a day a week you could dedicate to your other business. Do you think you could grow that thing? You could find more business, start to kind of make it start to grow? When you realize that all the energy and time and effort you're putting in, the, in your day job, that was now started to put towards your company. I mean, amazing how quickly you start to, start to make things start to happen. And the, the idea that you need to make things happen, too, starts to drive you. So you have energy from doing those kind of things. And, it, it, you know, if it's happening now, it's coming to you now, chances are you can find more stuff if you're doing it more on a full-time basis. We're out there kind of making it, you know, making it happen. But you've got to make that jump. And you don't know until you make the jump how good you are. And there's no guarantees. But I'll tell you this, once you make that jump, it's hard going back. Very hard. <coughs> and you realize that it's... Almost impossible. Yeah, and, and, and most people, you know, <coughs> worry about, you know, or think about it, will I be employable again? Well, chances are you're going to be employable. That's what gave you the, the courage at age 39, Jack, to say, I'm, I'm leaving the corporate world. You knew you'd get back in the corporate world if you wanted to. But, well, let me take that jump out and I'll figure something out. But if I need to get a job, I can always go back and get a job. But it wasn't doing it for you. So the job's not doing it for you today. Chances are it's not going to do it for you five, ten years from now. And you're going to wish ten years from now that you'd done it today, that you'd gotten, out, you know, you'd gotten out of there and started doing your own thing. So quit finding reasons not to do it and find reasons to do it and realize that there are some potential risks, I guess, but they're nowhere near as risky as, I think, having a job that you don't enjoy, that's not made for you, that can then cut off at any point in time anyway versus doing things for yourself.